right, uh, just a couple things to review how you're supposed to hold your violin and your bow. Um, I told everyone in class that you can start holding upside down. So I have this in my right hand and the tip is pointed out to my right. Um, this is the easiest way to get the thumb right. The thumb comes right on this thumb pad and bends into the hair. So you don't want to poke your thumb through too far, otherwise it gets trapped and it can't get in the proper position. So pull it back almost as though you have a dot on the tip of your thumb. You want to hide the dot and have that big knuckle bent. The rest of your fingers are going to lay where they naturally want to go in this position. Um, but the pinky you need to balance right on top. Sometimes I put this on, on the side of the bow, not this side, but behind, so I can kind of push in. But this finger is our balance finger, and it's responsible for uh, the spring of the bow. Um, it, it's the spring of the bow, and when you bow and you want to do smoothly, you want to make sure that your pinky is nice and supple and not locked out so that you have to only use your arm. So keep that nice and curved. Now the tricky part is to flip this over and still keep the pinky on. You feel all the weight go into the pinky. So I have a little bit of a space here. You never want to hook your index finger around um, clenching the bow, so just lay that on top. And these two fingers come over the frog just like so. Not all the way over, but here. And avoid putting your pinky on the screw. Bringing it in closer helps it keep that curved shape. So that's the bow holds. I recommend practicing this a lot. And just if you feel like you're getting too tight, shake out your hand and then re-pick up your bow with the least amount of effort. Start upside down and then flip it over. Okay. Holding the violin. Make sure you have your shoulder rest on. Um, if you're using most shoulder rests, you put them on. So if you hold it up like this, it looks like a frown on the back of your violin. Uh, mine doesn't quite do that frown shape. But if you have it on like a smile shape, it feels pretty uncomfortable. So violin goes up high on your shoulder. And you are going to turn your head about 45 degrees. And really, you're holding your instrument uh, about 75% with the weight of your head. And then your hand floats up. You want to have a space here, so you don't want to be holding it there. You want to bring the space down. And then you turn your fingers over. And here, that C-shaped hand comes into play again. And then when you press your fingers down, make sure you don't bend your wrist in. However, if you do bend your wrist in, you uh, won't be getting in trouble too much for fiddle songs. A lot of fiddle songs just stay down in first position and you don't need to shift up higher. But if you want to have good form and technique, then you can really practice not breaking this wrist. And also you can reach your pinky if you want to use your fourth finger. From this position, you really can't reach your pinky very well unless you have super long fingers. When you bow, you just want to keep straight bows in between the bridge and the fingerboard. So it's a really good idea to practice the G scale, which is what I'm going to play now. Remember, the we start on the G, put your fingers on the tapes, but then when you get to the A and the E string, your second finger is in the low position, which means it hugs this first finger here. So let's do a slow G scale. Ready? Play. Uh -huh. 